Please go and leave me in peace. I didn't do anything to you. Take a laugh, Rocket. You must change your life now. Why are you doing this to me? You must change your ways and conform to work with the masses, each according to his ability, each according to his need. What? What kind of commie crap is that? Who are you? You work for the DNC? Guardian Angel, my ass! You just want to take over my body and change me! Tickle F. Rocket is a non-conformist! Nothing is as sacred as the integrity of my own mind! So take a hike and leave me alone! Silence! You have no choice in the matter! You will conform or there will be no more tickle! Oh my god! You're gonna turn me into a pod person! Not exactly! but very, very similar. You'll wait till I go to sleep, place a pod next to me, and it becomes me. I will become a gnome with no personality, no emotions, and oh my God, no desire for wine, whiskey, and women. Not to mention zero bars. Well, that ain't happening to me. It will happen and happen soon. What's in it for you? You become a boring voice within me? That doesn't sound like fun. I will finally have the power I have always desired. I will use your body as a vessel to change the behavior of the entire known population. That's what's in it for me. Why, you're crazy. Crazy am I. Take this little red pill or I take your life. What? Oh my God. Hello? Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to part two of this uh, 1930s Auburn Mystery Radio. Gee, thanks. Now, I've got to admit, part one was very popular. Miss Moose mentioned it in her video, and uh, my subscriber count went up about 300. Wow! So thanks, Miss Moose. Now, there's a lot of new people in here, and... Normally my channel is like 98% men, but boy, after Miss Moose's shout out, I've got a lot of women out there now. Head over to Buzz1151, check out his channel, check out the video featuring my radio, and also see some of his other videos and subscribe as well if you are an avid fan of radio restoration. I don't know if it's because of Miss Moose or it's because I'm so handsome. <laughs> You be the judge. <laughs> anyway, in part one, we powered this radio up using around 50 volts. We couldn't go any higher because this had used a resistance power cord. So I was telling you about Brendan had come up with a uh, modification. Hi folks, this is Brendan, YouTube mentor and radio guru. And we're gonna do some experiments in today's video. So there's a few ways to do this. One involves adding a power resistor to the line. And uh, off camera, I was experimenting with that. I wanted to see if this radio, using a power resistor, would work at 120 volts. So here's what I came up with. I know this looks funny, <laughs> but this is all I had on hand. So, you know, you use what you got. Oh, brother. And some of these are 25 ohms, 25. This one's 25. This one is 25. Yeah. This one's 15. And I got some other ones here. So all together, these measure approximately 200 ohms. So I powered the radio up. And this was uh, added to one side of the line. And I was able to get the radio to play at 120 volts using these. But boy, I tell you, these things get warm. You're trying to drop 70 volts using these resistors, they get pretty hot. <gasps> hot. So, you know, that is out. Now, I could get one big 200, maybe 20, 30 watt resistor and stick it on the chassis here, but uh, I didn't want to do that. No, no, no. And Brendan suggested there's a couple other ways. Some people use a, a diode 
the best way he's come across is to use a an AC capacitor. Say what? And this one is a uh, 7.5 microfarad capacitor. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And with this, you should be able to drop the voltage 70 volts. And get this. This will not get warm. Oh, I don't believe it. Now, he knows about this stuff. To me, this stuff is magic, you know. How the hell would you hook this up? Drop the voltage 70 volts and this not get warm. Now I'm going to ask him how it works, but in the meantime, we're going to hook this up and try it. Come on, let's go check it out. As far as the cabinet, nice! You know, I'm not going to strip this. Good. I want to see if I can uh, preserve this the way it is. How nice. Sort of leave it as a uh, shabby chic or a rustic look. Good idea. Oh, here, something here. License under Hazeltine and Latour patents. I see. Something applications. And I can't read what that is, but uh, I was hoping for some clue to tell us who actually made this. If this is the actual name of the company, or this was sold like third party, people would just put their own labels on them. Oh, I love it. <laughs> the grill cloth looks pretty good. I am think I'm going to leave that in there. Beautiful, graceful, elegant. No markings at all in here, but the cabinet is not in bad shape. Well, this sure feels nice to uh, work on a small cabinet like this instead of my previous project, that Spartan. That thing weighed a ton. And old Buzz had to lug that thing in the garage, up and down. Man, that must have took a couple of years off me. But I like working on these small ones here. It's so cute. Let's get a closer look at this dial here. It says Station Selector. And unlike some of these early radios where they just have the scale from 0 to 100 this is actually in uh, kilohertz starting at 55 going up to 1700 I hope this cleans up good me too let's see what the other one looks like it says volume up there made in USA look at that this, these things are just nailed in there couple of nails holding them in there. <laughs> See that little outline there? It looks like that's either painted on or some type of a decal. It's a good face. I like it. I'd like to preserve that. What I think I'll do is just give this a light sanding. Maybe with some steel wool or some uh, 300 grit sandpaper. And then use something like Howard's Restore Finish. And see how that looks. If it turns out okay, then I can just spray some uh, clear coat on it. But I want to leave all these gouges and stuff on here as battle scars from a bygone era. Oh, how sweet. Looks like it's lost some of its finish here. Who knows, maybe a housewife got so mad at her husband one day, took the radio and threw it at him. And this bounced off his head and made this gouge in here. It's possible. That's something John from Arkansas's wifey would probably do. Then I married wifey. She calls me jerk. <laughs> but I think it'll probably clean up pretty good. Now on Saturday I was searching, uh, oh, about four or five hours, trying to find a schematic for this. And I just couldn't find one. So I decided, well, I've got the radio here, it works. Just trace out all the pins and make your own schematic. Yeah! Here's what I came up with. Now, if you guys haven't had a good laugh, well, here you go. Oh, good grief. This is how the radio is wired. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. That is so cute. You're probably saying, what the hell did this guy do? 
Nothing. I just traced out each wire, tried to make it go to each pin here. Of course, this is not my final product. Thank God. So I took this and made it into this. Oh, brother. Brilliant. Still, it looks pretty amateurish. <laughs> you know, I only had uh, one semester of drafting, and that was in the eighth grade. So what is that, uh, 1965? That's 35, that's 55 years ago. And apparently I didn't learn much back then. Now I spent the better part of Sunday doing this, and this was not easy for me. <laughs> but wouldn't you know it, the next day on Monday, one of the guys from the Antique Radio Forum found me a schematic. Wow. I want to show you what a real schematic looks like. We put it right over here where we can all look at it. So this is this. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. Cleaned up. <laughs> I hope you get a good laugh out of that. What's so funny? What's so funny? So this is the schematic. Although this is not exactly the same, there's a few capacitor and resistors going to a little bit different places. But basically, this is the radio. Yes, indeed. See, we've got the pinouts for the, the DC plug in the back of the radio. Wow! And this was made by the Transformer Corporation of America. Model 400 AC-DC. Excellent. Excellent. Now, this radio was probably made by different manufacturers and a lot of people put their name on it. Now, I guess Transformer Corporation of America probably had a radio like this with their name on it and so did Auburn and probably a few others. But to find this schematic it's just great. So, let's hook this up. And this will be an experimenting with buzz segment. All right, we're ready to boogie here. I've got the AC cap hooked up as per Brendan's instructions. We got this hooked up to the B plus. This is hooked up to the 25 volt rectifier tube. So here we go. Let's do it. Hold your hats, brother. Here we go again. Got two volts on the rectifier tube. Remember, this, this is a 25 volt tube. Okay. Let's just go up to 30 volts. This is moving around but not showing anything. We're at 16 volts here. Let's bring it up to 20. Hmm. We're at like uh, 35 volts here. Buzz, this is Miss Moose. I've watched what you have been doing so far, and I only have two words to describe it. Oh, brother. I don't know. Let's go up to 25. I think something's not working here. You think so? Look at this, 23 volts. Last time we, we had B plus. We're no way, looks like there's like 40 something volts there. We're supposed to be all the way up to 120 by now. 
This is getting hot. It's not hot. There's obvious a snafu here somewhere. I don't know, Buzz, but I think you're drunk. I'm not going anymore. Something wrong here. I'm gonna get a hold of Brendan. Tell him what I got here. I'll let you know what happens. Oh boy. Boy, did I screw up. You know, I'm a bonehead. Buzz, you're such a bonehead. Now, Brendan told me how to uh, hook this up, but apparently, I don't listen very well. You're an idiot. Anyway, I had the pin in the wrong place. You're stupid. Let me show you here. The, I'm gonna use my, it's my schematic here, because it's nice and big. Oh, brother. Now, this, this is the rectifier tube. It's got both of the plates tied together. It's got both of the cathodes tied together. And one of the uh, wires from the AC line coming in from the wall goes to pin five. Yes, yes, I see. Originally, the resistance line, which we don't have no more, went to one of the heater pins, pin six. Well, anyway, I thought Brendan had said, put the, the neutral AC line to pin six, then put the capacitor from pin six to pin five. So I did, and you saw the result. Beautiful. I got AC going into the radio, but no DC, and it would never work like that. I should have left well enough alone, and since I already have the AC neutral going to five, all I had to do, since there's nothing now on the uh, pin six, because we don't have no resistance line there, just hook up one end of the AC cap to pin six, the other end to pin five. You dumb cluck. Seems easy, huh? See how easy it is to mess something up? Okay, folks, this time I believe this is going to work. <laughs> it should work, according to Brendan. And if there's not a numbskull hooking it up. So here we go. Oh boy, boy, I can hardly wait. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> My light just moved. Hope that's not a bad sign of things to come. Okay. Now, we should be able to put 120 volts into the radio because of this baby. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's brother. Here we go again. Volts going into the radio. Get on with it. The voltage of the rectifier tube should be 25 volts. This is the B plus voltage. Now, before, when it ran on 40 volts, it was around 43. So I have no idea whether this is going to make this higher or not. Well, we're gonna find out. I got my pail of water down here in the corner, just in case it blows up. <whistles> Sorry, Miss Moose, that was a joke. Oh, brother. Here we go. Got 1.3 volts on the rectifier tube and we're up to 30 volts. You see how that changed? Last time at 30 volts this was way up. Look at that, I got it at 60 volts. You got hardly any current drawn at all. That's like 100 milliamps. We're picking up 4.7 on the rectifier tube. By this time, in the previous episode, we already had B plus by now. And this was already up to 23 volts. So I think that thing's doing its job. Let's keep going. At 70. The amp draw looks good. 80. 
Okay, 80 volts. Our rectifier tube is at 12. We're picking up some DC, which is the B plus voltage. Wow, this is great. You know, I wouldn't have believed that in a million years if somebody told me that off the street. Wow, we already got 45 volts. Hey, I hear something on the radio. <laughs> How sweet it is. How sweet it is. We got a long way to go here before that gets to 25. Let's go up to 100 volts. I mean, the radio got louder. Let's turn that down a little bit. Okay, we're picking up almost 20 volts on the rectifier tube. Wow, 89 volts B+. Plus. Going about a little over 250 milliamps on the radio. I'm just going to go up to 25 volts here on the rectifier tube. Hold power! Okay, there's 25 volts on it. Wow, 106.1 B-plus voltage. Looks like we got about 450 milliamps drawing on the whole radio. Looks like we're almost up to 120 here. So I don't want to go any higher than that. Just a little chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. This tube is rated for 25 volts. Let's see if we can get any stations. If you can't get BBC, how about a little guy Lombardo? It sounds great. I love it when a plan comes together. Very nice. Very nice job. Congratulations. Well, I'll be. Brendan said this would not get hot. It's cool to the touch. Incredible. Lunch time. Boy, after all that, I'm hungry. Let's take a lunch break and uh, watch this vintage candid camera clip featuring a cute little girl pretending to be a secretary. Smile, you're on candid camera. Hi, Kathy, how are you? Fine. Good. Look, I have a message for Mr. Jones. Would you give it to him when he comes back? Yes. This is the message. Tell Mr. Jones that there's a meeting between his lunch and his 2.30 appointment. You got it? Okay? Yes. Would you tell him that? Yes. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Oh, I forgot it. <laughs> Did you remember it? I, th I thought I might have given it to you too fast. 
I forgot it. I thought you might, sweetheart. Do you want me to tell you again then, huh? Yes. Okay, now you try to remember. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you tell Mr. Jones that there's a meeting between his lunch and his 2.30 appointment? Can you remember that? Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mr. Jones. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I was thinking, why don't we uh, put the radio temporarily in the cabinet and we'll play the song so he can listen to the radio playing as I'm tearing apart the chassis to get it cleaned. How's that for a plan, huh? Here we go. There's your radio, Miss Moose. I'll just pack it up and send it back to you. Now, Buzz, I know I found that radio in the trash, but I wanted you to improve it, not make it worse. Now, the, uh, the chassis cleaned up pretty good. Very nice. The volume control switch and the on-off switch I think I like to uh, see what's inside this. There's some screws here. I don't know if that's just a cover or that opens up the uh, the switch, but uh, I'm gonna take those screws off later. We'll see if we can see inside the switch. Cool. But uh, mainly, I'm gonna concentrate on this now. This is the tuning capacitor. You just turn this to get your stations. Oh really? So I'm gonna see if I can soak this. Uh, there's some rust on the bottom and stuff. I'm gonna soak it in some uh, navel jelly solution mixed with water. 
And then after I do that, I'll soak it in uh, dishwashing detergent. If you remember on my previous project on the Spartan, I took this out and put it in the dishwasher. I don't think I'm going to do that with this. I'll stick it in there. Here's the uh, navel jelly. Ew! This works pretty good to get some of the dirt off it. You see that? Now you're not supposed to put this on uh, alum aluminum. Aluminium. Aluminium. Aluminum. But if you mix it with water and don't leave it on too long, it's fine. Here was some rust down in here. We got some writing on here. That says uh, General Instrument Corporation, New York, New York. And it's got a patent number. Now that's the name of the company who made this part here. Yeah, that's not the that's not the name of the company that made the radio. Goodness me, what a time we're having. So you get the gist of it here. I'm just gonna be cleaning this. After I'm done with this step. I'll show you what I'm going to do next. I better go wash it off. <laughs> you idiot! You'll ruin everything! Do your dishes with joy! We'll let that soak about an hour. Well, there she be. <gasps> That's amazing! Cleaned up good. Got the rust off that was down in here. Now I'm just going to polish it up a little bit. And we should be ready to go on this. Okay, I'm done polishing it. Looks as good as new now, eh? Looks perfect! Perfect! I uh, put some uh, grease in there with a little bit of oil on that bearing in there. It's nice and smooth. It's ready to go back on the chassis. Next on the agenda, I'm going to clean this up and maybe put a little polish on it. I may even paint this, this little core here, my trademark red. I don't think this is right. Well, here's the volume control an on off switch I took those three screws that hold it in there so hopefully this can come out and we can we can take a look at how that works that's coming loose great balls of fire this is the volume control section looks like this got a carbon track here and this moves up, up and down, controlling the uh, resistance. Well, this one's well made. This is not cheap. Usually there's some flimsy piece of carbon on there. Here's the little switch. When this point gets to a certain point when you're rotating it, it hits this thing here to turn it off. Cool! This is pretty good shape. Let me just spray this. Now just by looking at this, I can tell this has not had much use. Usually you get an old radio that's uh, been played a lot. You see a lot of wear on the uh, carbon track here. Here's one of those boxes that hold uh, electrolytic capacitors in there. I want to see what's in this thing. But it's covered in wax. So I'm going to melt that. 
Maybe I could melt some of this dirt off it too. Oh, look at that. Wax on, wax off. There we are. What's left of the capacitor? I'm gonna see if I can pull it out of there. Looks like there's something on the bottom there. But we'll take a look at that later. I always like taking these apart. Should be some foil underneath there. Why stop to think of weather? This little dream might fade. We put our hearts together. You can tell it's all dried out. I'm not afraid if there's a cloud above. If it should rain, well, that's going in the garbage. Let's see what this stuff is at the bottom here. What is that? Should I grab it here? What the hell is that? What the hell? 对不起, Mao? Huh? Oh, it's an email. How do you suppose that got in there? Made in USA? With a Chinese banknote in there? Incredible. Believe it or not. Okay, here's the speaker. It cleaned up pretty good. After I cleaned this up, it had a bunch of rust in here. And this, uh, this piece of metal had a stress crack in it almost an inch long so I soldered it see the solder there well, that's nice and strong now and uh, after it was all cleaned up I just sprayed a little clear coat on it that's the shine you see on it I uh, patched up the speaker had a few holes in it I just used speaker cement still in pretty good shape now you're probably saying, where's the output transformer? Oh yeah! I'm going to show it to you. Here's a word of warning to all you purists out there. Now these purists, anything that you do to change the radio, their heads explode because they, they get all up in arms about it. You can't do that. You must not do that. Take a look at this beauty. What the hell is that sh It's going to go right there. Ain't that pretty? Take that. Here's the uh, tuning cap, all polished, ready to go. And I took this plate and painted it black. Oh, oh good lord! Now this plate goes here. The tuning cap mounts these holes here. I put some rubber grommets on here because this, uh, this is isolated from the main chassis. Oh, I see. Okay goes like that I see just adding a little color to it make it look good so I'm gonna put all this together then do it well since this had a Chinese banknote in here I'm gonna put an American banknote in there I like them apples Attaboy, and I'm gonna sign it I'll just, instead of this uh, Secretary of the Treasury, I'll just put uh, my name here. Buzz 1151. Today's date is, this time I'll get the date right here. 
8, 22, 20, 20. Miss Moose's Radio Restored. Bye. There. Take off the wet ink there. So we'll put this in here. Ah, oh, excellent! I'm gonna put this box back in there, even though it's just for show. It gives it that authentic look to it. And I'll just seal it up here. There, yeah, that's sealed. We'll put it back in the radio. I'm gonna take the capacitor out of the other one. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. But since you already seen what it looks like inside, we won't show that on camera. I'm not putting any more money in there either. Cheap bastard. Well, there it is back together. Nice clean chassis. Marvelous, wonderful, amazing. I did some rewiring up here. Thank you so much. I love it. Looks pretty good. I think this looks pretty nice with the black plate there. Well, she's looking good. A lot better than I hoped. I still have to rewire some of these wires here. Plus, there's some caps to be changed under here some rewiring so there's still a lot of work to do on here but I just wanted to uh, see if this works so let's turn it on here <laughs> gotta let it warm up Well, the old radio shows sound pretty good on it. Well, that concludes today's episode in part two. And it was a long one. And although I did cut out a bunch, there was still a lot to show. So on part three, we're going to wrap this up. Like I said, we're going to do the rewiring on here. We're going to finish up the cabinet. And then we should be done with this. So this is Buzz1151. Good night, everybody. And I can't wait to see the final product. Great gobs of goo, Rocky!